This hair has officially become too long. On the last video, a lot of you guys asked for a way to create ammunition and reloading. And so that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. And if you don't have a gun script and weapon switching already set up, you can go ahead and watch the two previous videos. I'll have a card linking to them here. So let's just jump into it. So in the last few videos, we set up this hierarchy where we have the player, then the main camera and the weapon holder. The weapon holder has a weapon switching script that allows us to switch out these three different weapons that are all childs of that object. And on each of these objects, we then have a gun script and this is the script that we want to modify so let's go ahead and double click that and if you're using a different gun script that shouldn't be much of a problem this technique of applying ammunition and reloading applies to pretty much any gun script i've ever seen the first thing that we need to do is add a few variables we need a public integer and this is going to store our max ammunition so max ammo and we can default that to something like 10. Then we also need a private integer and this is going to store our current ammunition. So that's going to be current ammo and we're not going to default that to anything. And then we'll also need a public float and this here is going to be our reload time. So we'll write reload time and set it equal to something like a second by default. Cool. So now we can go and create a start method and all we really need to do here is add a single line which sets our current ammo equal to our maximum ammunition. So right when we start the game or right when the gun is selected, we make sure to fill up our ammunition. Now every time we shoot, we of course want to subtract one from our current ammo. So let's go to the place in our code where we shoot. In our case, that's inside of this shoot method. And here we just add a line and you can do this anywhere within the method. And it's going to say current ammo minus minus to subtract one. So now our ammo should set itself correctly and update when we shoot. And so all that's left is detecting when we run out of ammo. To do that, we go into the update method. We write if current ammo is less than or equal to zero, meaning we've run out of ammo. In that case, we want to go ahead and call some kind of reload function. And of course, we want to make sure that we do not go ahead and check for input and then fire. And so we'll put return in here, which means that our code will simply stop here and not continue on to the next if statement. Then we can make our reload function. So let's go down here and write void reload and we'll start by just throwing a debug.log statement saying something like reloading. And of course we want our reloading to take a bit of time. But for now, just for testing, let's go ahead and set our current ammo equal to max ammo. And then let's save this, go into Unity, and our debug.log statement should appear every 10 bullets. So I'm just gonna hold down the mouse one here, and there we go. It says reloading, and if I continue here, it's going to keep doing so every 10 bullets. So in order to add some reload time within our reload method, we need to be using what is called a coroutine. Coroutines are a bit weird syntax wise. And so some of this stuff you'll probably just have to write after me, but they are also extremely useful. Let me show you how they're used. So first off, in order to use a coroutine, we go to the top and we need to import, so say using system, dot collections. When you create a script, notice that this line will be there by default. Probably the primary reason for that is coroutines. We then go back to our reload method and instead of writing void here, a coroutine is of type i enumerator. This is a weird word and we won't be focusing on it too much. Let's instead go in here and now add a separate line. And so we'll write yield return new wait for seconds. And here we specify the amount of seconds that we want to wait. So you could just put in one here or in our case, we could put in reload time and close that off. So what we have here is pretty much a normal function. We can call it from anywhere in our code and it's going to execute the things that we write in here. However, because we've marked it as an I enumerator, this function is now a coroutine. And this means that we can effectively pause our function at any given time. So in our case, we write reloading to the console. We then pass for reload time seconds and then continue on to set our current ammo equal to our max ammo. The only thing that we have to be careful with when dealing with coroutines is that we cannot call them like an ordinary function instead we have to write start coroutine and then input reload and remember to have both the parentheses for start coroutine and for reload in here so now when our ammo reaches zero we should call our reload method which is going to display the message wait set our ammo and then we can continue on. However, there's a slight problem, and that is that every frame where we've run out of ammo, we're going to go ahead and start this coroutine. And we really only want to do this once. So what we'll do is go up here and add a private boolean, private bool, and we'll call this something like is reloading. 
and we can default it to false. Then in our update method, we'll go ahead and add another line on top of everything else. And it's going to say if is reloading. So if we're currently reloading, we want to go ahead and just return. So we don't want to do any of the other stuff we have in our update method. And we want to begin reloading at the top of our reload function. So in here, we'll set is reloading to true. And when we're done, after we've waited and set our ammo, we want to set is reloading to false. So now when we save this and head into Unity and hit play, we should see that we can shoot 10 times, it will then pause for one second, and we can then continue shooting. And indeed it does. Awesome. So the final thing that we can add here is some kind of reload animation. However, we actually have a bug in here that occurs when we start reloading, then switch weapons, and when we then switch back, we cannot shoot. And the reason why is that we never finish reloading. And so when we go back, is reloading is still equal to true. But our coroutine got interrupted, and so it will never be set back. We'll go ahead and fix this in a moment, but let's first add some animation. I want to make it so that we can add separate animations to each weapon, but in my case here, just to make things simple, I'll have the same animation for each one. So instead of animating heavy rifle and pistol, let's go ahead and animate the entire weapon holder. To do that, let's go window, animation, to open the animation window, let's Let's hit create. Let's go ahead and create a separate folder for this called animation. Let's save this animation as weapon idle. Let's also go ahead and create another clip and this one is going to be called weapon reload. Now we can hit record and for a weapon reload all I want to do is rotate our gun along the x-axis. Something like that and inside of our weapon idle let's also hit record and make sure to insert a keyframe where our rotation is zero. Now let's stop recording, go under the animation folder, let's double click on the weapon holder controller, and we can now see two animations, the default one being weapon idle. You can always make an animation default by right clicking and going set as layer default state. And then we also have the weapon reload animation. We want to be able to transition from our weapon idle to reload and back. To do that, we right click on weapon idle, hit make transition, and then click on weapon reload. And we do the same the other way around. However, right now we don't have a condition on these transitions and so they'll just occur immediately. We only want this to happen when we start reloading and so what we want to do is go up here under parameters and add a new parameter. We'll make this of type bool and we'll call it something like reloading. This is a simple boolean value that we can control through our script. It can either be true or false and we can have our transitions only occur if this value is equal to either true or false. So transitioning for weapon idle to reload will only happen when reloading is true and the other way around will only happen when reloading is false. We also want to select both of these animation and turn off has exit time. This way we don't wait for our animation to play out but we just transition as soon as it happens. So we should now actually be able to parent our animator over here, hit play and if we now go ahead and check this value you can see that we can switch between the two animation states. Now to control this through script let's go to our gun script. Let's Let's add another public variable. This one is going to be of type animator and we'll just call it animator. Then when we start reloading down here, we'll say animator.setBool and the boolean we want to set is the reloading and we want to set it to true. Then we wait for a reload time and then we can set this ball back to false. So if we now save that and go into Unity, we can see that an animator field appears for each of our weapons. I'm just going to select all of them and drag in the weapon holder. If you had separate animations for each weapon, you would drag in the animator that sits on that particular weapon. And if we now hit play, start shooting, and you can see it reloads. Awesome. Only one thing is that you can actually start shooting a tiny bit before the reload animation is totally done. And that's because we can start shooting as soon as we set the bull reloading back to false. But there's also a bit of transition duration there by default it's 0.25 seconds. So what we can do is actually wait for reload time minus 0.25 seconds, then set reloading to false, then wait again, but this time only wait those 0.25 seconds. It's just a quick workaround, but it works beautifully. And now we should see that it only starts firing when it's totally done. So to fix our little bug here, where if we go ahead and shoot and reload and then change weapons, you can see that it kind of messes up the animator. And when we then switch back, we aren't able to shoot. Everything is being a tiny bit weird. To take care of that, we go into Visual Studio. We go ahead and create yet another method. And this one is going to be void on enable. And in here, all we want to do is set is reloading to false. And we also want to go animator.setBall reloading to false as well. So the only difference between the start method here and the on enable is that start is only called the first time the game object is enabled, while on enable is called every single time. And so this is one of those fairly rare cases where you actually need both. And we should now see that when we begin shooting, 
start reloading, switch weapons, it goes back to normal and we can now shoot with the other weapons as well. And when we then switch back to the weapon, it starts reloading again and everything is good. And so this should very, very easily work for all of our different weapons. And you can see they simply use the same animation right now, but you can go ahead and hook it up to different ones. And you could also go ahead and expand upon this with some kind of UI displaying the current amount of ammo. Lots of possibilities here. That's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. Also, I'm really excited about the video that's going to be airing this Sunday, it's going to be a behind the scenes video showing the making of my recent entry into the Lodom Diary 38 combo. I had a blast making it and I hope you guys will enjoy it. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in March and a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Kellhound and Jason the Tito. If you want to support the channel and become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash Thanks a lot guys.